Morning YouTubers. I got a fun video today. Don't mind that over there. It just caught fire from stick welding. Don't leave paper on your table. I learned my lesson. So anyways, today's video, we're going to be talking about just doing simple welds. And I figured out a way to kind of get a decent arc shot. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not really the greatest by any means, but I think we can learn a lot from the arc footage that I captured. So let's talk about that. So in this video, you're going to see me do four welds. I did an initial short weld with 6013 and captured the arc on it. Then I went back and did another 6013 right here. Then I did a 7018 here. And then I flipped it and let the plate cool and ran another 7018. So the whole theory of this is I just wanted to give you an idea of what you should be looking at. Like I know I've taught a fair amount of people how to stick weld and some people seem to have a really hard time understanding when I say watch the puddle, what that even entails. So I figured I'd spend a little bit of time and try and capture an arc that's footage that's at least good enough for you guys to have a better understanding of what you're looking at. Now, if you can't see anything like what I'm showing in this video when you're welding, you may either need like a cheater lens in your hood, you may need glasses, or maybe you have like an eyesight problem. It's hard to say, like if your vision, if you get regular checkups on your vision and they're good, then maybe there's some other issue. I mean, maybe even your welding hood is set too dark. I generally use between 10 and 12 for a shade. If you're somehow on a 14, you probably couldn't see much, you know, so, that could be part of the issue. Um, but anyways, the first one, let's get this out of the way. Let's talk about this guy. When I struck the arc with 6013, you're going to see, as I'm pulling this rod just nice and slow, the molten puddle for this rod is essentially a little bit brighter, and that brightness doesn't come through too well on the footage. But you'll see that there's a lot of turbulence or swirlies going on. And the puddle's only about, I would say, double the length of this rod. This is only a 332nd rod. It's a very small area, and it just has more bubbles to it, I guess would be the best way I would describe it. So let's watch that now. All right, here's the same footage. I slowed it down quite a bit so we can look at it a little bit better. You can tell that the molten puddles there, every once in a while, it kind of, I guess the turbulence, you can see it, and then you can see that round edge. It's almost like an overall oval shape. That's what you're looking for. That round edge and that more turbulent area is your molten puddle. Your travel speed should be slow enough that you're just slowly dragging that puddle along. So both of these clips I sped up a little bit because it's easier to see that molten puddle. This is the same weld in both, but stare at that. You can really see there's like a liquidy oval that's more liquidy than what's behind it. That's your puddle. So as you saw, you could somewhat see a puddle. The puddle is very liquidy and then where it stops being liquidy there's a slight color difference or brightness difference. That's the edge of the molten pool. One of the things I decided to do after I ran this, I ran another pass and I'm going to show you that right now. So in this video this is shot real time it's a couple inch, maybe three and a half, four inch long weld. And pay attention to the area about twice the width of the rod. You should be able to see that molten puddle there. Again, it's pretty difficult to see, but just real, pay, really pay attention to it. So 
So in this video, it's the same as the one you just watched, just sped up. That molten puddle's in some respects a little bit easier to see. So you saw both this weld right here up top and this weld. Now I'm going to switch over in the video to 7018. It's also 332nd. This was run at 90 amps. That 6013 was about 75, I think. But I ran it, and we're going to watch that. And you're going to notice a significant difference in your molten pool. The molten pool for a 7018 is like an eye shape. The molten pool for a 6013, the trailing edge, is round. It's almost like an oval. 7018 is much more defined. You'll have no issue in this video seeing the puddle. This is the same video we just watched. I slowed it down. Now you can tell with this 7018, the molten puddle is very, very distinct. It's essentially an eye shaped. Very clear there in that footage. So the whole trick is, is that when you're dragging the puddle for a 7018, you want to maintain that eye shape. If your molten puddle starts turning like a figure eight or a peanut where it's narrow in the middle and then big on the ends, your travel speed's too high. If the puddle starts really widening out and you lose that distinct eye shape on the trailing edge where it just rounds out, you're probably traveling too slow and putting too much heat in. All right, so we just watched that 6013, the 6013, 7018. Now, this pass, because the plate was preheated, wetted out a lot more, and the molten puddle or that eye shape was a little less distinct than what this pass will be. I thought I would come back and on a cold plate run the same settings as this pass on here, and what you're gonna find in the video is it's even more distinct of that eye, that molten puddle you wanna watch. So let's look at it. So this is the same video we just watched. The trailing edge is definitely eye-shaped. I find that 6013 tends to round off a little bit more than coming pointed, but it's very distinct here. And that's one of the reasons why I like welding with 7018 over like 6013. It's just a lot easier to see what's going on. Well, in those videos, we saw molten puddles and some of them are more distinct than others. If anything, it really teaches you that every rod has a different molten puddle. Some are more easy to see than others. I know 7024, which I didn't feature in this video, very tough to read the puddle because so much of it's molten that it's just, it's almost indistinguishable. 6013 is a little bit better than that. 7018, very easy to see. 6010, also very easy to see. So every rod has its own, own distinct puddle shape. And once you can read that puddle, that will tell you everything you need to know. Like you're gonna hear me in countless videos say, read the puddle, read the damn puddle, read the puddle. It's gonna wear on you, trust me. Well, that's the puddle, you saw it. When you drag that puddle and it maintains its shape, so it's eye shape or it's oval shape and you just keep that shape where it's not lengthening like this and it's not disappearing. That's telling you that all your conditions are good, that your travel speed are, is good, that your amperage is good, that your arc gap is 
good. You just slowly drag that molten puddle. Anytime that puddle turns into like an egg shape or not a figure eight or a peanut shape where it goes from this to this, you're traveling too fast. If it starts going from like this to like this or like super long, you're traveling too slow or your amperage is too high. Not really too complex, but it's, you'll get a feel for it. Trust me, guys. You'll get a feel for it. It's, it's worth it. Just stick with it. So anyways, with that said, thanks for sticking around. If you got any comments, questions, concerns, leave them down in the comment box. If you have a favorite rod you like, leave it down in the comment box. I read all the comments and respond to most of them. So I like reading what you guys have to say. So anyways, until next time, thanks.